So, welcome back. We have been working on this idea that theorem proving in logic is something which subsumes all programming, all computation essentially. That whatever you can do with any other machine, any other language and with its compiler or whatever, you can do with theorem proving. We talked about arithmetic in the last session. We saw how addition can be done and then of course, once you know how to do addition, you can do multiplication and once you know how to do multiplication, then you can figure out how to do subtraction and division and then you can talk about finding prime numbers. All that comes later essentially, but you can do computation in logic programming is what we saw. So, let us now look at a slightly different uh, this thing. Let us talk about lists because lists are something that programming languages like to work with quite a bit essentially. In fact, in the last century in the in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, the most uh, advanced programming language if I, if I can use the term advanced was something called list processing and which was expanded as LISP, L-I-S-P. So, L-I-S stands for list and P stands for processing. So, LISP was a language which people said is the language for AI. One of the reasons that it allowed to do was that you could define arbitrary structures and you could use dynamic memory and things like that. You did not have to define arrays of fixed size and uh, that kind of stuff. You could grow search trees. Uh, without any restriction and and it was a functional language. Functional language is something uh, which has some kind of an analog with uh, logic programming languages that logic programming languages are built on top of uh, the relation in mathematics and functional programming languages are built on top of functions essentially. So, everything is a function in functional programming language. So, the thing was that that Lisp uses its only data structure when it was invented was a list structure and it represented lists as binary trees, this is what we are going to see now, which means that it could represent lists of arbitrary length and arbitrary nestedness, uh, which was not possible in other programming languages at that time. So, let us see how lists can be represented internally as binary trees and we will look at one simple list function, which is to append two lists together. So, we look at three lists here, a simple list containing two elements A and B, a slightly longer list containing four elements A, B and C and third a list containing two elements, but one of them is itself a list which is A, B. So, in the diagrams that we are drawing here, a circular node is represented as a dotted pair or a cons pair. So, let us look at the first list which is this list A, B. So, when you draw this, we draw this in terms of circles and this rectangles. The circle represents a what is called as a dotted pair or a cons pair. This word cons comes from the language Lisp. So, it is a basic operator in, in cons. So, when we say cons something with something, it basically says that take a list and add a new element at the head of the list and that operation was called cons. So, for example, uh, if you look at this statement, it says take an empty list and put b at the end of it essentially. So, this empty list is this, this, this empty box here and then b is put at the head of the list thing. So, the and that is a cons pair, that circle is a cons pair. The left child points to the head of the list and the right child points to the rest of the list or tail of the list essentially. So, you can see that that, that cons b nil represents this list and this whole expression says cons, so, so this is the outer cons which is here. This outer con says it is a cons, cons of A which is the head of the list and another list which is cons B 
nil. Cons B nil is a list in which B is the head and nil is the tail, the entry list is the tail. In short form, we write this as a list of A and B. Essentially. Internally, we would write it as cons A, cons B, cons nil essentially and we can think of it as a binary tree as drawn on the top. Here is this longer list A, B, C, D. You can see that the same pattern follows. Uh, you start with the topmost cons and it says A is the head element, then you go down, then B is the head element of the remaining part of the list, then C is the head element for the remaining part of the list and so on. So, you can see that when you write recursive programs about lists, you can think of them as this kind of binary trees or you can think of them as this dotted pairs or cons pairs. The third list is it has a nested list. So, at the topmost, I have a cons, but the head of the list is itself a list which is shown by this here. And the tail of a list is a list which contains only C. So, it is seen as a list which is cons of C of and nil essentially. So, that is a structure that we work with essentially. So, let us look at a program to append two lists. So, I am already using the phrase program. Uh, what I am writing going to write is a set of logic statements. The schema for the predicate, every predicate you should define as to what are the constituents and how are they related to each other. That is of course, given by the semantics, but it must be clear in your head as well. So, when we write append x, y, z, we are saying that when you append list x to list y, then you get the list z. You will see this similarity between plus and append and in fact, the similarity is very stark, striking. This is a program which is a program for appending two lists and you can see the parallel between the program for adding two numbers. The base clause says that if you append the empty list to anything, you will get that same list back. So, append 0 x x. The recursive clause says that if you can, up, if you append x to y and it gives you z, then you can look at the successor of x and append it to y and it will give you the successor of z. The successor is defined in terms of cons. So, in fact, this is not quite correct. I should write this as uh, cons a x. So, this is an error here. And what you will get is cons a z. So, the parallels of copy paste. So, I copied that code from plus and pasted it here and I forgot to change this successor thing with the cons function here. So, let us read this again. What does the recursive clause says that if you can append x with y to give you z, then if you append x in which a has been put at the head and append it with y, you will get z with a has been put at, put at the head essentially. So, that is the correct definition and I will correct it in the slides, but you must make note of it. So, here I have written it correctly. instead of a, I have used the constant c here or where it can be anything, it does not have to be a constant, it, it can be a list or it can be something. So, in the clause form, I have written the correct definition, in the logic form, I made a mistake. So, here we are uh, and uh, now let us see if we can, how do we use this to append two lists. So, like we did in the case of natural numbers, we said that we are not saying that x is a natural number. Here also we are not saying that x is a list. We could define a function like list 
and and then work with that. But we will leave that uh, aside for the moment because that is imperative from the pure logic point of view, not from the point of view that uh, program that we are interested in seeing how logic works as a program. That that function would, if we had defined this function list x, it would have simply said that this statement where you append 0 to an empty list, you get sorry, if you append an empty list to a list, then you get a, the same list back. You are just emphasizing the fact that what you are doing there is a list essentially. So, ideally speaking, you must you must put that list condition there essentially. So, you might write not uh, Uh, this is true only as long as uh, z is a list. So, here is our program to append to list. Uh, the query is given on the top in the heading. It says that if I append a list which contains a and b to a list which contains c and d, then what will I get? What will that x be essentially? So, you can see that the list containing a and b is represented as this cons a cons b with the empty list and list containing c and d is represented by cons c cons d with the empty list and the query is x and for good measure we have added the answer predicate here. So, that we will have the answer computed as we go along instead of having to trace back the substitutions. Uh, we will build the answer as we go ahead essentially. So, our answer is going to be contained in a variable called x which will stand for some list. The pattern of this proof is identical to the pattern that we did for adding two numbers and it is no surprise that the first number there was 2 and here the first list is a list with two elements. So, therefore, the number of derivation is also going to be the same. So, you should just go over this a little bit carefully. Uh, so, this y's that we are talking of are they are coming from here and uh, from here that is what is being matched. So, that is being this thing to y 1. So, that means we have moved one step inside the list there. So, the answer is going to be a with whatever the answer for the rest of the thing is. So, a has already been added to the answer and this y 1 has to be added in essentially. Then in the second step, uh, both a and b have been added to the answer and y 2 has to be added. But by this time, our query has an empty list here. And of course, it has this other argument that you wanted to append C and D and you can see that that will match with Y 2 and uh, then you will get this answer in this, this thing. The value of the variable is, it is a list which is made up of A, B, C and D essentially. So, here we have done appending. Yeah. Just like we did addition earlier, we can do append here uh, as well. So, I hope that is somewhat convincing that uh, we can do everything in logic that you could have done with imperative programming languages. One feature of using a set of logic statements as a program is that we are only specifying the relation between the different elements. We are not even saying that we are going to add two numbers to give us the sum or we are going to append two lists to give us the resultant list. We are saying in the case of numbers that if you have three numbers x, y and z, when is it true that x plus y is equal to z? We are not giving a procedure for adding. Likewise, we are not giving a procedure for appending two lists. We are so simply showing when does the relation hold essentially. A plus point of that is as follows that what we showed earlier is that we can compute z 
from the query 2 5 z that if you if you add 2 to 5 what will you get z essentially that is like doing addition. But you could also compute y from the query is that if you add 2 to something then you should get 7 what is that something you will get the answer y is equal to 5. So, you can see that the same program same piece of code can be used to do addition as well as subtraction. Okay. What is even more interesting is you can even give a query like plus x y z where all three are variables and the answer would be true and when you run prologue you will see that you can get the first answer, the second answer, the third answer and fourth answer and so on because this particular query has many answers and the other two queries had only one answer. So, you would stop with that, but in prologue you can keep saying give me the next answer, give me the next answer, give me the next answer and then you would see that it would practically print the whole addition relation for you 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, 0 plus 1 is equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and all possibilities would be given out essentially. We will look at logic programming in a little bit more detail next and after we are done with that we will come back and look at declarative programming from the perspective of forward chaining. So, by now I hope it is clear that logic programming is kind of closely tied up to backward chaining and as we will see uh, it is also tied up to searching the goal tree in, in that first search fashion. So, going from goal to sub goal and so on. The idea behind declarative programming is that you define the relations between input and output and let some other program do all the hard work for you of establishing that the relation holds for a given instance. We will also look at this idea of declarative programming from the forward chaining perspective and in fact it was developed with a slightly different motivation this forward chaining rule based expert systems as they are called they were designed to capture the knowledge of experts in the form of rules and we did mention a program called X, XCON or R1 earlier, um, but in the same spirit that if you can capture the knowledge of experts in the form of rules, then that knowledge can be utilized by another program when a given problem is to be solved. And that other program is called the inference engine. And there is a very neat algorithm for doing this efficiently, which is what we will look at after we come back from looking at prologue. <laughs>